Grace will know what I should be doing to help Jessica. If she calls back. Well, it's morning in Europe now. Grace should be calling any minute. Dad, I still think you, you might be overreacting. I guess Jess is just going through her bad girl phase. I went through mine, and I'm over it. She'll be her old self again. I'd like to believe that. But Jess's behavior is more extreme than yours ever was. I mean, your sister smokes, she drinks, does drugs. And being violated by that scum in the back of the underground club doesn't seem to have phased her in the least. I know. That bothers me, too. But, you know, I think tonight's going to be a turning point for her. I mean, deep down, I'm sure she knows she can't go on like this. Hey. Hi. I just came by to check on Jessica. Well, she's not doing too good. I mean, Jessica over her can't smoke talking about her and went ballistic. Said that she hates us and wants to be left alone. Oh, well, that's just... That's just because of the kind of assault that Jessica suffered. I and mean, she feels dirty and violated and unworthy of love. And the wanting to be alone is just a manifestation of wanting to disappear so she can't be hurt anymore. Oh, Eve's not even close. She wants to be alone so she can hurt herself in private. Sam, I think if you just give Jessica a little time, a little space, so she can come to terms with her situation. But, but let her know that you're there for her and that you'll give her whatever she needs and, and that you love her. I'll do my best. But I'm not sure Jessica knows she can count on me. I mean, after Grace left, I buried myself in work. I mean, that's one reason Jessica started down the road she did. I mean, I wasn't around to parent her the way I should have. I should have had a firmer hand with her as well, but I didn't want to overstep my bounds. Well, she hates me too, OK? She blames me for messing up her chances with Reese. Maybe I did. Sam, have you contacted Grace? Is she coming home soon? I have a call on the Grace, but she hasn't called back yet. Sam, you know, I'll try to fill Grace's shoes. I, I know I could never replace her, but I'm home now. I don't have a job. I'd be happy to give Jessica all the love and attention she'll let me. Look, I appreciate that, OK? But I still think Grace needs to know what's happened. And then it's up to her whether she comes back to Harmony or not. I agree with you, Sam. I think Grace is my oldest and dearest friend. And if she knew what happened to Jessica, she'd be on the first flight from Europe back home. As Grace knows that, that a daughter needs a real mother. Maybe you can save Miss Bennett a trip, Mom. <laughs> Jessica's mother doesn't know anything about drugs and casual sex. You're the expert. Jessica only has to look at the way you messed up all of our lives to be scared straight. Simone, don't talk to your mother that way, OK? She was a great mother to you and Whitney. Yeah, that's why my sister ended up lovers with our half-brother. Please, Simone, don't make light of Whitney's situation. I'm not. It's not Whitney's fault, it's yours. And your father thought I'd let Eve have a hand in raising you, my daughter. <laughs> I may be evil, but I'm not insane. Let's just let Jessica have some time to herself before I check on her. Now, teenage girls can be overly dramatic. Everything is just black or white, life or death. Sam, you know I will help you with Jessica any way I can. I've made mistakes with my own children, I know that, but I think I, I can learn from those mistakes. And, and together, I think we can give Jessica all the love and structure she's been lacking since Grace walked out on you. Excuse me, Ivy, I, I don't mean any offense, but you are no substitute for Grace. You know, at a time like this, a girl needs a real mother. And I'm sure as soon as you contact Grace, that she will come rushing back from Europe right away to be with her daughter. Grace's decision to leave hurt all of us. Jessica is her daughter. And underneath her hurt, I have to believe that she still loves her mother. Of course she does. Ivy's concerned that if Grace comes back, that it'll affect our relationship, but I don't see that happening. Grace made her decision, and I made mine. It's as simple as that. Well, you may have fooled Sam, but you don't fool me for a minute. 
You're afraid that if Grace comes back, that she and Sam will bond over Jessica, and you will be left out in the cold. I work far too hard to win Sam back, to lose him now. And just think, one little word from me could topple that whole house of cards you built on that lie that David is Grace's long-lost husband. Here we go again. <laughs> you know, Eve, evidently Grace isn't the only one suffering from amnesia around here. We just played this scene at the hospital. And as usual, you folded faster than Taboo did on Broadway. If you keep pushing me and see if I don't push back. I've lost my husband. I've lost my children. I have lost my home. I don't have anything left to lose. Except your freedom. Meaning? Sooner or later, you will be put on trial for three counts of attempted murder. And even though the evidence against you is overwhelming, a really good lawyer might be able to punch enough holes in it to get you off, provided the jury doesn't see you as the selfish, self-serving witch that the prosecution is going to make you out to be. And the point, Ivy, <sighs> if you tell Sam and Grace that I hired David to pose as Grace's first husband and that I blackmailed you into lying about John's DNA test results to squelch any doubt that he might be Grace's son, then the truth about your involvement in my little scheme, it's out. And everyone will see that you allowed your best friend's marriage to be ripped to pieces because you cared more about your own well-being than Sam and Grace's happiness. And to see you as so heartless and driven to protect your own interests, that's not going to look good to a jury, now is it, Eve? And as for friends lining up to testify as a character witness on your behalf, after seeing the way you betrayed Grace, you'd be lucky if Judas put in a good word for you. God, you are a hateful, heartless woman, I. Oh, even Ivy's stalemate rivals that of the Cold War. <laughs> Can't believe how cruel you are, Ivy. Look at you, you're still threatening me after all the hell that I've been through. Well, TC didn't start calling me Poison Ivy for nothing, Eve. And you, of all people, know what I am capable of when it comes to Sam. I moved heaven and earth to win him back, and I will stop at nothing to keep him. As for hurting you, Eve, that is not something I want to do. I know this past year has been hell for you, and I know that you are finally happy with Julian. And with his love comes every luxury any woman could ever want. So please, Eve, please, just enjoy your life. And let me enjoy mine with Sam. Jessica needs her mother. Jessica needs Grace. And besides, I'm not sure I could live with myself if I just let you go on with this lie that you're living. But Eve, please. It's an emergency. We'll have to finish this some other time. Oh, Sam, I just got paid. It's an emergency. I think that we should just let Jessica have some time to herself for a while, and then I'll just come back and check on her later. Okay? I'll walk you out. Okay. Let Randy's Rug Ranch steer you into deep pile discounts with our shop at home service. Two messages. We must not have heard the phone ring the last time. Sam, Look, I'm returning your call. I'm at the hotel now, so you can call back any time. I, I hope everything's okay. Bye. I can't let Grace come back to Harmony. She'll ruin everything I've done to win Sam back. Was that Grace who called? No, Sam, no, it was just some, uh, sales pitch for new carpeting. I really thought Grace would have called back by now. You know, and despite everything that's happened, I really think that Jessica needs her mother now more than ever. 